Hello there, everyone. Hello. Happy Thursday. I hope you're having a wonderful day. And in tonight's talk, I wanted to go through some of the trainers that I have had during my career and go through what I have um, learned from each of them. So um, let's see, my internet connection is maybe not the best today. Let me see what I can do about that. Hang on one second. I think I've like overloaded my internet tonight. So <laughs> let me see if I can, if I can make it better for you guys. Um, anyway, so in tonight's live, I wanted to go over what I've learned from all the trainers in my career. So hopefully that sounds good for you guys. If you have any comments as um, I go through tonight, go ahead and let me know in the chat. I will do my best to reply to those as we go through them. So, okay, you guys can't hear. Okay, I'm going to, hang on. In a few of these, I was trying to stream on like everything and it wasn't working. Okay, so back to the topic. Tonight's topic is the trainers that I've had in my life. And I think it's really important to recognize all of your teachers and your trainers that have helped you along the way because you learn so much from them and you learn different things from all the trainers. And so today I was filming a video about my three horses and you guys like asked a lot of questions about my horses. I don't honestly, like, I don't like to talk about my personal horses because I would rather spend time helping you guys. But I also realize that when I tell stories about my experiences or my life, that that helps you guys along in your journey. So tonight I thought that I would share with you that some of the trainers that I've had since I started riding up until now, what I've learned from each of them. Before we get started, I wanted to give a big shout out to our new Patreon members. So this week we have Bonnie Binger, Barb Burrell, Ari Hook, Martha Weston, Joan, and Jeannie Kari. So thank you guys so much for your support on Patreon. If you haven't checked us out yet on Patreon, I post a lot of like behind the scenes stuff there. So if you want like more videos from the horse shows or um, more of my training videos, then be sure to check us out on Patreon. So getting started, the first trainer that I had and you guys that are here live, if you want to leave a comment and um, let me know one thing, maybe the name of your trainer and then what you've learned from your trainer. So my first trainer, her name was Julie Berenger Richards. And what I learned from Julie was really about working hard and the importance of a community. And so with Julie, she would always say when we go to the horse shows, it was one for all and all for one. And what she meant by that was that we were all there as a community and we were expected to help one another. So it was a gr really great way to grow up with a community of students riding where we had to support one another. The other thing that I learned from Julie was I think she was part of where I started learning about the importance of a work ethic. And um, with Julie, one thing that I really loved about her was that we all had to tack up our own horses. We all had to be like super involved in that side of things. And then once we were like a little bit older, we like I started working for Julie and I would help the little kids get their horses ready. And I remember like filling out the time card with my hours and how many hours I worked, and then I would work off my lessons with Julie in that way. So that's one thing that I learned from Julie. She was my first riding instructor. The other thing that I really admired about Julie was that she had like a very clear system for how to train riders. And so 
before we were allowed to canter off of the lunge line, we had to be able to canter on the lunge line. She would put side reins on the school horses so that they were round, but we had to be able to canter without hands before we were allowed to have the reins while we were cantering. And I think that this step, a lot of people miss and kind of like the step-by-step -step really training someone from the ground up how to ride correctly and how to do that correctly where people don't get like scared or hurt in the process. And so Julie was really wonderful at breaking things down and taking kids that didn't know how to ride and building them up into riders. And she has taught a lot of um, really good riders over the years. So Thank you, Julie Berenger Richards, for being my first riding instructor and teaching me the importance of working hard and having that community sense. So that's what I learned from Julie. Um, kind of my next trainer, I guess you could say, is Larry Fleming. And he was a natural horsemanship guy. I started working with Larry when my horse Geronimo, who you've may heard of, he had like a really bad rearing problem. And so I kind of left the dressage world and went to work with Larry. And what did I learn from Larry? I think that I was like really afraid of Larry, <laughs> to be honest. He was kind of scary. And one thing that I learned from him was how particular you have to be about everything, like how every interaction that you have with your horse shapes your entire relationship with your horse. And I remember with Geronimo, like he was, Geronimo is like a bossy kind of assertive horse. He's a great horse, but he can be pushy. And so he did this thing when you take him and put him back in his stall where when you'd go to take the halter off, he'd just like rip his head out of the halter and run to the other side of the pin. And I must have been like, I don't know, 16 at the time. And Larry said to me, he was like, I don't care how many times it takes you to take off that halter, but you need to take off the halter and he needs to stand there respectfully with his head down for like a second or two. He can't just like rip his head away and run to the other side of the arena. The other thing that I learned from Larry is how to start a young horse, like how to break a young horse. So we got this horse, Scotty, my, my mother, Joelle, and she actually still has Scotty. I think we paid like $500 for him. He's this little red roan quarter horse out of Nebraska. And we got him as a two-year-old and he was practically like rank, like he was wild, really. He never had a saddle on. He was barely halter broke. And so we got Scotty and I was going to be the one to start him. So I started like, you know, doing the groundwork and just taking my time. And I remember one day Larry said to me, you know, it was kind of a big deal. The first time you put a saddle on a horse that's never had a saddle on, a lot of times they will like really buck hard. And so Larry, he, he gave me some time limit. He was like, okay, like you have an hour. And you have to have Scotty saddled in an hour. And so he kind of, Larry was really good at like, he would put pressure on you or like give you a task and then set you loose. And you had to figure it out on your own. And he didn't, Larry didn't never give like lessons, like in the dressage sense, like he never sat there and like explained to you exactly like, do this, do this, do this. It was kind of like, here's what you need to accomplish, go figure out how to do it. And you could learn a lot by watching Larry and watching him work the horses because he was just an amazing horseman. But a lot of it was like just struggling through it and figuring out how to do it on your own. So I learned so much from Larry and it was um, really just a wonderful experience to get to work with him. And he saved Geronimo because when we took Geronimo to him, Geronimo would just like rear up, like stand on his hind legs all the time. And Larry really like broke it down and helped Geronimo understand how to give to the pressure, how to bend, how to yield his hindquarters. And if it weren't for Larry, you know, we never would have had that. 
when I was at Larry's, I also learned how to rope. I learned how to start young horses. It was, it was so amazing. And it, it was definitely a little bit tough love. Like it was like, you know, if you want this, if you want to figure it out, then go out there and figure it out. And your horse is your best trainer. But um, it was an amazing experience to be at Larry's. So let's see who's here. Hi, Lori. And Dottie says, I've had many instructors, but you have helped me really understand theory. The dressage training scale masterclass rider position and the academy have taught me so much. Yay. That makes me so happy, Dottie. So yeah, that's part of why I wanted to share this with you guys because, um, you know, I've had amazing trainers that have helped me get to the place that I am. Like if I hadn't have had these teachers, I would never be where I am today. So anyways, thank you to everyone. Hi, Cindy. I any of you guys that are live, kind of think of a trainer that you've had. You can put their name down. And then one thing that they taught you because every trainer has different strengths and weaknesses and they can teach you something different. So then after Larry, basically the day that I graduated high school, I moved out of the house and I took my horse and I went to work with Mindy Bauer. And Mindy is an amazing horseman as well. It was so amazing being at her place. I lived there and I literally would wake up at like 6 a.m. and ride horses all the way until like it got dark. So as much as possible. And Mindy, I think, really taught me work ethic. Like, I, and I don't know, it wasn't like she forced me to work that hard, but Mindy worked extremely hard. And I remember she had this like whiteboard where we got the horses ready and, you know, we would try to get all the horses checked off every day. And it was a lot of horses. And not only that, but we also had to clean the pens, feed the horses, like do the arena, like Mindy was like a one person show. Like we did everything for those horses, including riding and training them. And it was her life. Like that was what she did. She rode and she trained and, um, and Mindy really kind of helped me bridge the gap between like the Western um, natural horsemanship stuff that I learned from Larry and then how to bring that into dressage and kind of put everything together. But I think the biggest opportunity that I had with Mindy was just like riding hundreds and hundreds of horses. And it was a wonderful time in my life where I didn't have to worry about like adult things. Like I didn't have to worry about paying the bills or the house or like clients really. Like she took care of all the billing and the organizing. I just got to ride. And none of them were fancy, but it was like, that was honestly looking back at my life. I think that was like one of the, um, the best times in my life for sure was with Mindy. Okay. So the next trainer is Sue Martin that I had. And Sue Martin is actually the reason that I moved from Colorado to California. But I wanted to tell you a funny story about Sue. And so I went one summer, I think I was still in college, and I took like three horses from Colorado to California just for a couple of months to ride with Sue. And she had this horse at the time in training, and his name was Lavaro. And he was this dark bay ex-jumper, and he was just kind of like a normal horse. Like, I rode him, and I was like, well, you know, he's nice, but like, whatever. So then I went home, and I came back a year later. And I rode Lavaro again, and the horse was completely different. Like it blew my mind the difference in that horse from last year to the next year. And Sue really taught me like that dressage means training. And if you train these horses, the difference that you can make in them is like insane. Lavaro was a completely different horse the next year when I came and rode him. Like, I just remember the prior year, his trot was like normal. It was like a pony. I came back a year later and he was like round and through and soft. And he had this like big, powerful cadence trot. And I think that's kind of what got me in love with dressage was like, wow, like if you can transform a horse, like if you can take a horse that's kind of normal, 
like that has three good gates, but it's like normal. And if you can transform the way the horse moves, the way the horse operates, the way the horse feels, it was really an eye-opening experience. And I'm so grateful to Sue because she was really generous with me about letting me sit on her horses. And I think that that's one way that you learn is through feel. And so if you can like feel it, like if you can get on someone's horse and feel what the Piaf and Passage is or feel what a pirouette is, you can learn it so much faster. And so that's a lot of um, what I learned from Sue. The other thing that Sue really helped me with was rider position. She was super picky um, about rider position and like just always on me about looking correct in the saddle. So I think that's definitely a big takeaway also that I got from Sue because Sue's a beautiful rider. Like she has a really good seat, a really nice position. And, um, you know, the more that you are surrounded by good riders and good trainers, the more that you start to bring that into your own riding. Okay, let's see who's here. So Susan says, Walter Zettel was an amazing trainer and horseman who taught me about the quality of the gates. That's awesome. I think he's pretty famous as well, Walter Zettel. So that's cool that you got to ride with him, Susan. Um, Lori Combat that says, Lindsay Farley, shoulder in is the key. Yes, shoulder in is the key. It's such an important movement of dressage. It's like the parent to half pass and pirouette and everything else. Um, Natasha is teaching me that I need connection and contact and can put the frame anywhere at any time. Um, what did she say? Oh, and nitpicking my crappy position. <laughs> yes. Awesome. So it's, it's so huge when you have trainers that can help you. And I think that I've learned something a little bit different from all the trainers that I've had in my life. And it's kind of like you take little pieces and then you make it your own. And, and that's really the beauty of it is that dressage is kind of an art. And so the more that you can learn and then, of course, have a structure, like that's where the training scale comes in. You have to ha have that structure, but everyone can teach you a little something different. Um, Catherine says, Dana Van Orman learned how to become the leader and basic course psychology. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Basic course psychology. So I learned that a lot from the natural horsemanship and from teaching young horses. So like Mindy and Larry was like really understanding, like how do horses learn? And it's all about pressure and release and how to get a horse to relax. I mean, that stuff is so important for dressage. And sometimes I think in dressage, you know, if you like get used to riding old school masters, then you don't really, you forget about like how horses actually learn. Um, Lori says, oh, and Joseph Newcomb, that I need to always think outside the box, ask the question, find ways to teach the horse to answer the question and reward the correct answer. Yeah, absolutely. Think outside the box. Every horse is a little different. And so you need to like, not just be like, oh, well, that horse is dumb or that's not a good horse, but you've got to think outside the box and find ways to um, help the horse understand what you want, because horses will always do what you want. So you've got to help them figure it out and then they will do it. The horses aren't like, you know, <laughs> they're not like trying to not do what you want. Uh, let's see. Donna says, you've taught me so much. I don't even know where to start. I'm so very grateful. Thank you, Donna. Um, video interrupted. I know. I think my internet is not so good tonight. So I apologize to you guys. Um, let's see. Gail says, a long time ago, I saw Sue at a show on a naughty gray horse. I will never forget how beautifully and patiently she rode the gray through its issues. So yeah, Sue... Sue is an amazing rider and an amazing horseman, and I feel very grateful to have gotten the opportunity to work with her. She's actually why I moved to California, and she now moved back to Colorado, but she's why I moved out here. 
Okay, so after Sue, um, then I worked quite a bit with Christine Traurig. And Christine Traurig is literally like, she's like an encyclopedia of dressage. And one thing that is so amazing about Christine is that she teaches you the theory of dressage, like literally the training scale during your lesson. And so I had this horse, Trump. You may have heard of him. He was the first horse that I broke as a three-year-old and then trained all the way to Grand Prix. And he was really, really difficult. Like he was so difficult. I learned so much from that horse and that horse made me cry more than any horse ever completely embarrassed me. But so I went to ride with Christine and she was like, well, your horse isn't supple and your horse doesn't bend in the rib cage. And I was like, well, I don't, I didn't really like understand like that you could bend the horse in the rib cage or how you bend a horse in the rib cage or how you get a horse supple or anything like that. And so that is what, um, what Christine taught me is really about suppleness and throughness and how to get your horse to really bend in the body. And sometimes with Christine, like literally the whole lesson would just be on a 20 meter circle, just focusing on like rhythm, suppleness and connection, like just focusing on the basics. And sometimes I remember just having like the most amazing feeling in my horse ever during my lessons with Christine. And Sometimes I would be like, well, you know, we didn't work on anything. Like I didn't get to do my flying changes or my half passes or anything. But what Christine really taught me was the importance of those basics and how if you have rhythm, suppleness, connection, and you can bend your horse in the rib cage, then the movements are like easy. They're not a problem. And so Christine really helped me to transform Trump from being like basically unrideable (laughs) to where I could actually do something with him. I mean, he was always difficult, but Christine taught me so much. And I so admire Christine. I mean, she is so hardworking. And one thing I will say about Christine is she puts her heart and soul into every single lesson that she gives. And that is a huge gift. Like there's many trainers that just like sit on the sidelines, smoke a cigarette, and they're like rounder needs to be more forward. Christine gets out there in the middle of the arena and explains things to you. And the way that she can put together sentences and explain the theory and the feeling that you want to have is so magical. And I'm so grateful to her for everything that she's taught me. I still work with her. She's the young horse coach for USEF. So I'm actually going to go ride with her next week, which I'm really looking forward to. So thank you, Christine, for everything that you have taught me. And as always, I'm looking forward to continuing to learn more. She gave me a great lesson on Luigi a couple of months ago at the horse show when he was being a little bit spicy. So Um, Let me check in here with the comments. Um, Yeah, I don't think my connectivity is so good tonight. So I apologize for you guys. Uh, Let's see. Dangy says, Sue Martin is my trainer. She's taught me the importance of the basics and my seat. Horse health is number one. Every moment is training. And yes, position is critical to be effective. Let's see who else is here. Edward Murphy says, someone, sometimes I wish I could cry. I just get mad at myself. (laughs) Christine says, I cried today. (laughs) Oh my gosh, you guys are funny. Yeah, I think we all sometimes get really frustrated and want to cry, but that is where, um, you know, having a trainer is really, really important because if you have a trainer, like sometimes you need that outside perspective so that you can kind of like see the forest from the trees and like see, have someone on the outside telling you what to do. Okay, next trainer that I've had is Yo Hinneman. And I started working with Yo like right kind of at the beginning of COVID or right before COVID started. And one thing that I just totally admire and love about Yo, among many, is how 
he is able to make like really complicated things just simple. Like he doesn't over like worry about the details or obsess over like small things. It's just like, here's what you need to do. Just repeat it, repeat it, repeat it again. And when I guess I started, I took my young horse Kensington to ride with Yo and, and also Harvey. He's helped me a lot with Harvey, but he just had me do so many transitions. It was just like transition after transition after transition. It was like can or walk, can or walk, can or walk. And some transitions were good and some transitions were bad. And then it would be like, okay, tweak this a little, tweak that a little. But he just has a really good way of, he has an amazing eye. And then he just sits there and tells you like what the most important thing is. And it's very classical. It's very based in the dressage training scale. And it's just following a system and repeating the exercises in a very methodical way so that it works for your horse. And um, and that's really what I've learned from Yo. The other thing that I think like pretty much all of the trainers that I've had in my life is they are really like they're horse people. And I think that um, in order to be a good trainer or a good rider, it's like a way of life. And I see that in Yo Hinneman because he's older and I'm sure that he doesn't need to teach or he doesn't need to ride anymore. Like he doesn't need the money, but he loves it. And he's out there and he's still so passionate about teaching and he's passionate about riding and he loves to ride and he loves the horses. And I think that's true for everyone that I've mentioned tonight is that all of my trainers really, truly love their job. They love the horses. And that's so important. And sometimes I think train like being a trainer is hard any career is hard. You know, if you've done it for year after year after year and had difficult clients, it's easy to get burnt out. But the trainers that I've all had somehow have kept that passion and that love for the horses, for the riding, for the training, and then have been able to pass that on through education to their students. So, um, so yeah, thank you to Yo and everything that he has taught me because it's, um, it's really special. Uh, who else? Oh, the other trainer I've ridden a lot with is Juan Matuda, mostly just in clinics. He's come to California a lot to do clinics. And one thing that I love about Juan is I remember I was riding in a clinic and I was riding, um, it was at a barn in Malibu. So you could literally see the dressage, see the ocean from the dressage arena. Like it doesn't get much better than that, right? Horses, riding horses with an ocean view. And so I'm like riding around and I'm like all serious and I'm trying so hard. And he says to me, he's like, look up, smile, enjoy ocean view. And I was like, oh, right. Like <laughs> this is supposed to be fun. Like I'm supposed to be enjoying this. And um, Juan, he's, he's sp Spanish. He's from Spain. And so he's got like a little bit of that Spanish flair where he's kind of like, he's so passionate and he's so excited about the horses, but he's also just like, like, I remember this one lesson where he's like, okay, now go and trot and impress me. And it's just like, he, there's a little bit of that showmanship about him where it's like, have fun, impress me, make it exciting. And that's kind of what dressage is all about. So anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed um, this little run through of some of the trainers that I've had. Like I said, I'm so grateful to all of them because without the trainers, um, there's no way that I would be the rider that I am today. So I'm incredibly grateful to all of them. And yeah. Also, I have a video coming out next week about my horses. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that. And be sure to check us out on Patreon if you hadn't yet. I, I post a lot of more of like behind the scenes stuff there. So I have more horse show videos and some lesson clips in there. So anyways, I'm going to go to the gym, stretch my shoulders and my back 
And I hope you guys aren't melting in the heat. It's definitely feeling like summer here. My face is like so gross. I was like literally rubbing dirt off my face. So I probably shouldn't tell you that. But that's just the truth of when you're out in the sun and the heat with sunscreen on, riding every day, and it's dusty. So happy summer, everyone. And we'll see you next Thursday. Bye.